Welcome, welcome back to DAP Build. And today it's all about getting things done. Half done. So firstly, if you're new to the channel, this is my, in absolute pieces, Porsche 911 Turbo 964 replica. It is based off a 1971 VW Beetle chassis, and over the span of quite a while now, I have been slowly rebuilding this thing to a hopefully presentable state, and I'm now currently stuck here. I have hit so many snags these last couple of weeks, and I honestly didn't think I'd get anything achieved by today, but I've just more or less pushed ahead and done other things instead. I am rather methodical in that I like to get a specific task done before moving on to the next, just so I know that I've done all of that job. I don't have to go back to it. I don't have to try and remember anything. And I know that seems kind of contradictory given I stripped the entire thing down and then restarted, but I kind of had to in that regard. But this rear end, and I will get to more detail right at the very end of the video. That wind is gnarly. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> the front end, uh, ball joints are now inserted. Much to my absolute bewilderment, I last week could not get them in. Uh, two weeks ago, couldn't get them in. And I ended up taking the entire arm to to a shop. They pressed them in after forgetting about them for a week. So I eventually got them. I got them literally yesterday. And when I got them back here, I thought that actually installed them wrong. They're actually a directional ball joint, so they can really only be pressed in one way to work properly. I do apologize for the noise if it is really bad, but it is chaotic outside, like ridiculous winds. Anyway, uh, so yeah, the, um, the ball joints are inserted. I went home completely devastated because I thought they'd done them wrong and then I'd have to buy new ball joints and have another shop redo them. Sure enough, I get here this morning, have another look, and they were correct. I don't know, maybe the mice came in at nine and fixed it for me, they were feeling sorry for me. But sure enough, the front end <laughs> is kind of done. Rolling a video now, when I was cutting off the old ball joints, I more or less disposed of them, they were no good, but I also disposed of quite a vital component that I need in order to reassemble them. And I only discovered this when I went to reassemble them. I will leave that little bit of video in just so you can see the stupidity. So now I have to do another order for parts to get them in to finish this front end. I was hoping to have this front end back on, getting this moved around, and then of course starting on that, which is the next part of the puzzle. But of course now I can't move this easily there's a reason. Uh, so more or less, yeah, I'm, I've ended up just going about doing other little bits and pieces that I can actually get to uh, in order to basically just jump ahead. So normally I like having certain things within the video. This is gonna be a bit of jumble. So I do apologize for you, you know, methodical like me, it's tedious. So yeah, enjoy, hopefully. And uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up at the end.
sort of the progress, just not the way I would have preferred to have done it, but is what it is. And at the end of the day now, I have to tackle this problem here, which if it wasn't abundantly clear in the video, because of the angle at the time I had the spray case still here, the internal thread is completely rounded. It's bored out basically. Uh, in turn due to the issue I had removing this bolt. So there are a couple of ways around this and the way I've chosen to go is more or less the first suggestion I read online just from a random person on the forum. But what I am going to do first before I even get to that is sort this out. So wait for these parts to come in, get this front end reassembled, somehow shimmy this back a bit to reinstall the, the front bulk. And then there's also a seal kit coming, which I was missing one seal out of the brake kit. So, and of course, two of the parts were wrong, or at least one part was broken. I did this last week, so I'm trying to remember now, sorry. Uh, the little tab at the bottom actually half snapped off, as you may have seen. And so I'm waiting for that replacement part to come. And then one of the rods themselves, one of these have had a small really poor rebuild in its time and they've used the wrong sized rod or the wrong side rod, uh, rod that actually holds the spring in situ. Uh, so I'm waiting for that part to come in as well. So I've got to take that all apart again, fit that new piece and then reassemble. So I'm not keeping these brakes forever. They are a temporary means in order to just get the car registered on the road so I can drive it at least. So of course this lovely tired lump here will be powering it, but of course then those brakes will be quite adequate. So drums in the rear, uh, discs, wow, at the front. Yeah, okay. Um, but I have got my eye on a set of brakes to upgrade the front, which I might even do before uh, and just register the car with those additional chunky front brakes. So the rears will stay the same for now, but I might upgrade the fronts. So this lump here will be getting a little bit of a freshen up, new spark plugs, new valve cover gaskets. I don't really know if I'm gonna to delve too deep into it because I'm not sticking with this motor, uh, but I might check the valves, uh, the valve clearances, all that sort of stuff, the rocker gear. Uh, but a lot of this tinware and this piece here, I don't think I'll be putting back on because I don't really need it. Uh, it's not going into a bug. So. Therefore, that isn't really necessary in the grand scheme. It does have a little support bracket there for the fuel line, which I can certainly make one up myself. It doesn't support it from the exhaust any more so. It is just basically a trim piece at the rear. So I can pretty much do away with that. This front scuttle as well, again, not really of any use in my situation. There's not an actual gasket that goes around. There's not actually a, you know, a very thin theme which hides all this. So I might again do away with this, just have the pulley exposed because a lot of this tinware is not attached properly. Like it's just rattling. And so when the engine's running, that's just gonna be personified. These tubes here, again, useless. That was for the heater system, which I'm not gonna use, but I'm gonna keep for now That'll be a thing down the track. Uh, I still need to get a, uh, an air cleaner, of course, obviously. The new mounts I've put on there, I do have a rear mount for the transmission. I didn't get to today. I will do that for the next video, you know, because this is already a parts or anyway. So as I said, get everything half done. Uh, but yeah, so I've just moved a few things around, removed a few things, and this will pretty much be as is. I'm not gonna really touch it. I'm just gonna leave it as is. It'll, it'll do in this situation. Uh, but yeah, I've got to fix this because I don't really want to touch that, but it is actually bent. They've used it as a jacking point at one instance, and of course, yep, I'm dirty now. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to basically clean that up, eventually put that back on. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to put the transmission on first or reassemble it and put the whole thing on. I'll think of that one later. But if anyone does know, that's a lot of wiggle play for the transmission shaft. I don't think it should have that much slop in it. I honestly don't deal with gearboxes at all. Heck, I, I hate internal combustion engines as is. I really don't like working on them. I'm, I'm not an engine person. But in this situation, I will be fiddling with this one. But yeah, that transmission, I don't know. Uh, and I will, of course, be running with that for now, probably long term. So I'm a little worried about that. I might have to actually get that thing rebuilt always completely upgraded to a five speed. 
Uh, but that is more cost, obviously, and much further down the track. And of course, that would be a modification. I'm trying to get this thing registered, so that's not really on the cards at the moment. So, for now, half done. We got the front brakes sprayed, and they're ready to be whacked on once I get those little, what are they call the camber adjustment nuts or something like that. They go onto the end of the, or top of the actual uh, ball joint here. And, yeah. So, before I go, this here, what my plan is to do, from reading someone's comment online, this will be flipped. Then, I'm going to cut open the bottom section there, much like I did on the A-arm to remove that bolt. So, I'll be slicing this open enough to be able to remove the existing nut, weld a new nut in. That's just getting worse. I'm getting out of here very soon. This is just picking up crazy. Uh, so yeah, I'll be uh, cutting that open, welding in a new nut, and then of course, hopefully, job be done there. So, uh, actually, oh gosh, it gets worse because it's not just a nut recessing inside, but it is a tube. So if I drill out that back section, put the nut in the back, that should still essentially work. Hopefully I can find a long nut. Oh man, this is painful. It shouldn't have been that much of an issue, but of course that was such a nightmare to get off because the bolt was seized inside. So this car is just fighting me every step of the way, but I am slowly winning. I'm sure I'll go insane before I finish it. But anyway, let's leave it there. So thank you very much for joining me. As always, like, subscribe, comment below, etc. This has been Dap Build. Now get back to your build. I hope it's not too painful. Until next time guys, cheers.